What's up everyone and welcome to another entry in our 5 minute flyer series where we show you how to create an eye catching and professional looking flyer in minutes. So let's go ahead and get started. Today we'll start fresh by going to create new flyer. We have some clients who really like the look and feel of tri-blends so we're going to suggest a few next level styles to use for the breast cancer fundraiser. Because there will be multiple products, it's best to go with a letter size format for our flyer. We'll give it a name, something like For the Cause, and click Create at the bottom to begin designing the flyer. Next Level has a really good variety of tri-blend options to choose from. The three that we'll suggest and search for in the Find Products tab are the 6051, the 6740, and the 6733. Now, for each product, we'll deselect everything in the options panel on the right side, except for photo. Looking at the model shots used for these products, they're not really working with the theme we're going for, so we'll have to swap them out. Under the photo tab, we can choose from color specific shots instead of a model image. In this case, we want to use pink but we also want to make sure to choose the front view of each shirt. We'll click through the colors to find what we need. Depending on the brand, you may be clicking through a whole lot of pages. Because of this, it'll take just a bit for us to find the pink images, so we'll zoom through this part. Because we're working with three products, we can have some fun with this design. We'll place the images on an angle, starting at the top right corner and working our way down to the middle of the left side of the flyer. We'll have to make sure we're resizing each one as needed so that we create a comfortable space between them. Now, I should note that each image has a white background to them, as we can see here. We'll want to arrange the layers so that we don't have any overlapping going on. Moving the tank top behind both shirts using the layers panel will help fix this. From here, we'll add in product info so that our customer knows more about the options we're offering to them. We'll do this by duplicating the 6051 image, deselecting photo in the options panel, but also checking off the product name and ID. We'll move this to the top left corner of the flyer and stretch the text out a bit to give it some breathing room, but also making sure to use the angle created by the images as a guide. By doing this, we can see the text size seems a little too big for the space it's in, so we'll change the name size to around 120 and the ID size to about 100. While we're here, we can change up the colors of the text so that they match the flyer's theme. By giving the name a dark shade of pink and the ID a lighter shade, it'll allow each line to stand out on its own. We'll do the same thing for the next two products, keeping in mind though to follow the angle created by the clothes. Now that the images and details are in place, we have to play the matching game so that it's clear to the customer which description goes to which shirt. We'll first list off the product info in a numerical order. We can do this by going into the product names in the options panel and editing their text. We'll start off by adding a 1 into this product name. Clicking a new description, we'll add in a 2. And with the last one, I'm sure you've guessed it by now, we'll go ahead and add in a 3. After this, let's check over the alignment of each description just in case anything moved on us after we edited the text. We can then go into the Add Text tab to the left and take, let's say, this Palatino font and use it to match the images to their description. We'll drag and drop the text onto the flyer and enter a 1 in the new text box. We'll shrink it down in size and change the color to a dark pink, similar to the description color, so that it stands out next to the image. To finish matching the images, we'll save some time by duplicating the new text layer twice and changing them to a 2 and a 3. We'll also go ahead and place them next to the products they belong to. At this point, let's go ahead and add in a tagline. We'll create it by duplicating the text we already have in the flyer and changing the font to something a little more curvy and fun. Inside its option panel on the right side, let's pick the font called Cookie. 
This will fit the theme just right with its cursive design. We'll need to change out the text as well, but we'll do something a little different. Let's type in for the in this text box, duplicate it, and type cause in the new one. We'll stack them together and resize them so that the two text boxes sit on top of each other just like this. Our flyer is looking pretty good, but it could use something in the background to break up the negative space. Before, we used stock images to help out our design. This time around, we'll use a vectorized image from Pixabay.com. I like to use vectorized images because their quality stays the same no matter how big or small they are. We found a pink ribbon that's perfect for the flyer's theme. We'll upload it to our account by going to Upload an Image inside the Add Image tab and search for the folder we saved it in. When it's finished uploading, we'll drag it onto the flyer. As we do this, it covers up some of the tagline. We can fix this by going to the Layers panel and dragging the ribbon below the text layers for the cause. While we're in here, we can go into the ribbon layer and flip it on its Y axis. This turns the ribbon so that it's now following the angle we created earlier. Let's also enlarge it so that some of it falls off the flyer, giving an illusion that it extends further than the paper allows it to. We'll also lighten the opacity to about 30% so that we can read the tagline that's above it. With everything set in place, it's a good time to give our flyer our stamp of approval. We'll drag our logo out from the Add Images tab and drop it in the bottom left corner of the flyer while resizing it so that it doesn't feel bordered by our ribbon. Placing our logo was the last thing we had to do, so now we can go to our Save and Share tab and send this out to our customer. Here, we can change our flyer's name, if we'd like to, but we'll keep it the way that it is and click Save and Continue. Saving does take just a few minutes to complete, so for the sake of the video, we'll zoom past this part. Since we're sharing this with our customer, we'll download it as a PDF to our computer, so we can send it out to them later today. Or we can email it to them directly through the Flyer Builder using the email option under Share Now. With that said, our flyer is finished. I hope you've walked away with a better understanding of how Flyer Builder can help you market your products in a quick and fun way. So until next time, stay creative and I'll catch you later.